here's the things we had to think through as we look at future budgets. Number one, the biggest dilemma that, that seek restoration puts us into is that you're not going to be able to pay it out of people or facilities, so you are going to pay this bill from readiness, force structure, and modernization. That's where the money is. That's where your savings have to be. So if that's the case, you, we have a dilemma immediately in the Air Force of do we want a ready force today or a modern force tomorrow? That's the dilemma. You can't have both. And so you're looking at a balance going forward between capability, capacity, and readiness. And you have to look across all those five mission areas I mentioned to you. You can't just focus on one. You've got to balance them all because we're responsible for all of them. You've got to look at recapitalizing. Where do you do that? Where do you buy new? And where do you modernize? And by the way, if you decide to buy new anywhere, you can't afford to modernize the places we were planning to modernize. We're looking at cutting up to 50% of our modernization programs to get this bill paid. So we have decided there are three major programs, the F-35, the, joint the uh, KC-46, and the long-range bomber that we think are critical to being a viable, credible Air Force in the future. And because we're a platform-based force, we have to invest now to have those things by the mid-20s. And if we do that, it affects our modernization. And the way we're approaching this is we're going to do the must-have modernizations only. Anything that's nice to have has no chance of making the cut. A lot of things we'd love to do that we're not going to be able to. Everybody tells us we should do tiered readiness. Tiered readiness works if you have the force structure for it to work. If you're the Army and you have 60 some, 65 to 68 uh, brigade combat teams and you have a standing requirement for 35 at any given time, you can have some type of tiered readiness where above 35, the rest of them are either building up or drawing down from the readiness state. If the Navy has a requirement for five to seven carrier battle groups and they have 11, they can have the other ones uh, above the five to seven can be on some kind of tiered readiness. Our standing requirement for fighter squadrons and bomber squadrons is equal to the number of squadrons we have. Our standing requirement for ISR platforms is below, or excuse me, is much greater than the number we have. So we are either ready or not ready. The alternative is to buy more force structure for the Air Force, then you could have a tiered readiness approach. That costs much more than just paying for readiness for the force you have. So for us, our supply equals demand. That's why we have a readiness model where everything should be ready all the time. It's a different model than the other services for a very good reason. T full spectrum training. We canceled red flag exercises last year. We canceled weapon school classes. This is where we develop our PhD level warfighters. Red flag and that full spectrum training is what separates our Air Force from other Air Forces in the world. We can't stop doing that. And then finally, where do you save billions of dollars versus millions of dollars? You don't save billions of dollars by nibbling around the edges of things. You can't get there from here. So we're looking at fleet divestitures as options. That debate will go on in the department for a couple of months until the budget's finalized. 